I loved the OnePlus 12. It made the leap to an out and out flagship smartphone, cutting compromises and finally competing with the big boys. But what about the old school OnePlus? Well, that's what we're gonna be discussing today in Android Police's review of the OnePlus 12R. All right, let's address the strange design. Your OnePlus 12R probably won't look like this. It is a very limited edition Genshin Impact model that comes with a glorious set of accessories. Functionally though, it's the same phone as what you can buy on OnePlus's website, and you can get the same wattage charger. So what I'll say in this video does apply to every OnePlus 12R unit. This phone makes more sense in the US than it does the UK. It's 500 bucks compared to the $800 OnePlus 12, whereas over here, it's 650 quid instead of the 900 pound 12. There's a big price difference between countries here, but today I'll be looking at it primarily from a US perspective. Compared to the aforementioned full fat model, there are a fair few cut features and specs to achieve the more affordable price tag. There's a slightly lower resolution display with no always on option, lesser IP6 for weatherproofing over the IP65, a majorly cut down camera stack with no periscope camera, no wireless charging, a one generation older processor, and less RAM and storage options across all the SKUs. It will receive one fewer update as well over its bigger sibling. That might make the phone sound pretty meh, but let me tell you, that is not the case with the OnePlus 12R. It actually reminds me a lot of the golden generation of OnePlus devices, and that's exciting. So let's talk about that. What's your favorite OnePlus phone? Is it the 7 Pro, the 7T? Mine's the OnePlus 3, because it gave you mega performance, solid battery life with rapid charging, and kind of settled on the rest to keep the cost nice and low. The 12R does a lot of that, but 2024-ifies it. Let's start with the staple. It's the performance. Now, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 might be last year's SoC, but that doesn't mean it can't still deliver brilliant speed and fluidity in and out of games. It makes sense to go with the slightly older flagship over the newer mid-range ones because you're still getting something that a few months ago was the best in a smartphone. It can game, it can be your entertainment hub, it can multitask with ease. It's quintessential OnePlus in this regard. I have absolutely no concerns about it staying quick for a good few years too, at least enough time to fulfill its three years of platform upgrades and an additional year of security patches. It maintains this OG OnePlus theme when it comes to the battery life and charging too. You get a 100 watt brick in the box, which in an era where most smartphones don't even have a charger in the box at all, is very welcome and performs great too, charging the device from zero to 100 in about half an hour. Not that you'll constantly need to keep the phone plugged in because it's 5500 mAh battery, kept my 12R unit going for two days most of the time. Like the main 12 version, the 12R has elite longevity, especially for a phone with this level of performance as well. Now, are you gonna get two days out of it if you're constantly in game? No, but with the display on max refresh rate and resolution out of the box, a mixture of Wi-Fi and LTE usage, and about 30 to 50% display brightness on average, with the odd push to 100%, my unit served me very well. And for those who only spend two to three hours a day with their phone screen on, this could likely be a three day phone. But you'll likely want to use that display a bit more because it's an absolute peach of a panel. It's a near enough 6.8 inch 120Hz LTPO OLED with a resolution kind of between Full HD Plus and Quad HD Plus. Needless to say, it's pin sharp, very fluid, gets really bright too, so outdoor viewing need not be a worry with the 12R. And it's definitely on the larger side of things, so just take note of that if you have smaller hands. However, with the center punch hole and the super thin bezels, the 12 hours display is fantastic for gaming and watching long form content too. The colors are a little muted out of the box, just like the full fat 12. So I recommend switching to the vivid color profile, which can easily be found in the settings if you want a bit more pop to your image. But thankfully, if you enjoy the tones down palette, you can leave that as it is. There are options here. And thankfully, OnePlus didn't cut corners in the build quality department, as a fair few flagship killers tend to do that. It's an aluminium frame with a glass front and back. You still get the three-stage alert toggle, 
which we all absolutely love. But there are a few little differences compared to the 12. Namely, there are textured rails instead of shiny ones on the 12. The slightly smaller camera bump on the 12R, it's still huge, uh, but it's definitely a little bit smaller. And it has IP64 water and dust resistance compared to the 6.5, as I spoke about before. Don't dunk your phone in the pool but it is dustproof, so it should be able to survive out in British weather too, just don't take it near the sea. But can it survive the scrutiny when it comes to the camera analysis? Well, this cut down model does have a slightly worse main sensor than the 12 and makes significant cuts to the surrounding sensors, including the ultra wide. There is no dedicated telephoto camera on the 12R with a near enough useless macro camera right in its place. And I can't believe I'm saying this about a cut down OnePlus device in 2024, but you can buy one of these and get a capable camera. Don't expect the world at $500, it's not gonna blow your Pixel or iPhone out of the water. But the main sensor gets within spitting distance in stills at a much lower price. Since you don't get the Hasselblad color science with the 12R, colors don't look as natural. This translates to slightly worse skin tones, worse color transition, and I'm not sure if this is a sensor or a color science thing, but it doesn't always nail exposure. I found in some scenarios for it to slightly overexpose, it's definitely not enough to ruin a photo and you can sort of adjust it when you're taking the photo, but it does favor the higher brightness and the more saturated overall image. Also, HDR blooming around the edges of high contrast subjects can look a little off, though I'm not sure anyone looking for this phone in this price point is really gonna care about that. It's just when you switch to the ultra wide and video modes, you aren't getting the same level of quality as the main camera. The ultra wide isn't great, though given the rest of the phone and the US pricing, I can kind of forgive it, it's not awful. And video stabilization is pretty good if you stood still, but when moving around, it can look quite jarring. And yeah, there are no AI camera tools with the 12R. Maybe OnePlus will go for it next generation, maybe it won't. But the 12R has a very decent main camera, so as long as you're not looking for the best of the best, this is pretty good. One of the main things keeping this phone from being a proper OG OnePlus is its software. It's clearly just a rebadged and slightly tweaked Oppo OS, which might be a good or a bad thing for you personally. I don't mind it, but there is a slight lack of polish. For instance, game mode loads up when I open my banking app and the accidental touch algorithm for the curved sides isn't great and I've had more phantom touches with this than any of the other phones that I've had recently that have had curved displays. Speaking of which, I hope next year we get a flat panel because I'm kind of tired of these curved sides. They look cool, but they don't function very well. But overall, wow. This thing reminds me of the best OnePlus era. It's affordable, it's fast, it makes just the right compromises. And the best part is, if you want all of those things and you want your phone to compete with the latest iPhone, you can just go and buy the full fat 12. That's an option. This is how you do it. One device for the kind of buyers that would have bought your older models and one to compete with the likes of Apple, Samsung, and Google. Well played OnePlus. A big thanks to you for watching this video. If you enjoyed today's video, then definitely hit like and subscribe to never miss another upload. How about this Genshin Impact model? Looks fantastic. Anyway, I've been Ryan Thomas with Android Police and I'll catch you later. Cheers.